Hi, everyone. This is my story as to how I got involved with online abuse and scams. And I have with me today here my sister who can attest to the many changes and situations that I went through. So without further ado, I'm going to bring the presentation forward. And first I wanna start off by explaining to everyone how easily we as a species are manipulated mentally. The art of persuasion with charismatic personalities can be very dangerous and we can often trip and fall into things that we are led to believe are good, which in my situation ended up being very bad. So I would like to introduce you to Chase Hughes if you've never heard from him or heard of him, sorry. He is a retired U.S. military officer. After a 20-year career, Chase now teaches interrogation, sales, influence, and persuasion. He developed the 6MX system for intelligence agencies, which is now the gold standard in tradecraft. Oh, I don't know what tradecraft is. Chase is the author of the number one best-selling book on behavior profiling, persuasion, and influence called the Eclipse Manual. Now, what Chase has said is that there's 89% of all humans on the earth that are easily persuaded and controlled, manipulated mentally and brainwashed by the remaining 11% of the population. That's kind of a, of a hard pill to swallow. At least it is. It was for me because I did a huge dive as to how this happened to me and why. Here is Chase Hughes's YouTube channel, and I strongly suggest you go check him out if you want to know a lot more about how you were persuaded and how to help you learn to read body language and social cues. I want to throw in a couple of clips of, Ch of Chase talking about how easily we are manipulated as a species. And I'm going to go to a screen share. System, a program in the American dream in one word, someday. Someday I'll get a job. Someday I'm going to save enough. Someday I'm going to get promoted. Someday the kids are going to grow up. Someday I'll retire and finally be able to live. Someday I'll be able to buy that. Someday I'll be able to achieve that. Think of all the movies that you've been exposed to since you were seven. The righteous and truly happy people are humble, modest, making a few dollars, saving money, and working towards retirement. The rich and wealthy are evil scammers. They're mean-spirited people. They cheat. They lie. They cheat. They exploit innocent people. So they had good intentions to create a system where people had a pretty good opportunity in life. But over time, corporations started to run the government like they do today. And they warped and twisted this into maybe the most successful mental programming scheme of all time. I can sum up, I can sum up kind and explain you way more than he's required to explain. Yes. I don't know why, I don't know why you're acting like this towards me. You just don't understand the hostility towards me. I'm doing my job. How am I being an asshole? That's a bad thing that's gotten into a lot of people now. Like, I need to explain everything to these people. He's also matching her volume and her tone, and he's essentially getting into an argument. I'm, okay, I don't care if you got home. You were supposed to stop at Phil Tro when I pulled you over. I admire this guy's composure, but in this instance, keep in mind that two people who have never met will automatically and unconsciously decide who is the leader in that interaction. And this will almost always come down to two factors. Number one is the person who's least reactive to the other person. Number two is the person with the most composure. Keep that in mind, not just for this video, but in your whole life. Okay, and I have just one more of Chase to kind of prove a little bit as to where I'm going with this story. Never been exposed to has been very covertly been designed to put two main thoughts in your head. The first main thought is I am not enough, and the second thought is how do I compare to other people? Ninety percent of your life and your results are literally created by your unconscious operating system. When you've had bad programming and it's absolutely not your fault, your brain will resist when it hears truthful information. And I'm going to say that again. When you've had bad programming and it's not your fault, your brain is going to resist when it hears truthful information about success and about wealth. So as you can see, we have really been led our whole lives by bad programming and programmers. That's Chase Hughes. 
Another source that I'm pulling on now is this book, The Rape of the Mind, The Psychology of Thought Control, Menocide, and brainwashing by juiced am mirlo md i am going to read a little bit i really want everyone to fully realize that we are programmable just like a computer absolutely okay since 1933 when a completely drugged and trial conditioned human wreck confessed to having started the Rockstead Fire in Berlin. Dr. Joyce A. M. Merleau has studied the methods by which systematic mental pressure brings people to abject submission and by which totalitarians imprint their subjective truth on their victims' minds. It is Dr. Merleau's position that through pressure on the weak points in man's makeup, totalitarianism methods can turn anyone into a traitor. And in The Rape of the Mind, he goes far beyond the direct military implications of mental torture, describing how our own culture unobtrusively shows symptoms of pressurizing people's minds. He presents a systematic analysis of the methods of brainwashing and mental torture and coercion and shows how totalitarian strategy with its use of mass psychology leads to systemized rape of the mind. He describes the new age of Cold War with its mental terror, verbocracy, and semantic fog. The use of fear as a tool of mass submission and the problem of treason and loyalty, so loaded with dangerous confession. As John Dillard wrote in the New York Times, Dr. Morlu is a passionate spokesman for the democratic practice of life as a general human goal, not merely as a device for beating off the totalitarians. Every thinking American should take some of his self time, his time for self development, and read this book. Dr. Merleau shows in his own person what psychoanalysis can do when it is freely combined with the social science knowledge. He is a remarkably developed individual man. Indeed, he is one of the great spokesmen of the democratic world and everyone should know him. Dr. Joyce Marlou's best-known work, The Rape of the Mind, is written for the interested layman, not only for experts and scientists. The first two and one half years of World War II, Dr. Malou spent under the pressure of Nazi occupied Holland, witnessed at first hand the Nazi methods of mental torture on more than one occasion. During this time, he was able to use his psychiatric and psychoanalytic knowledge to treat some of the victims. Then, after personal experiences with enforced interrogation, he escaped from a Nazi prison and certain death to England, where he was able, as chief of the psychological department of the Netherlands forces, to observe and study coercive methods officially. In this capacity, he has to investigate not only traitors and collaborators, but also those members of the resistance who had gone through the utmost of mental pressure. Later, as high commissioner, for welfare, he came in closer contact with those who had gone through physical and mental torture. After the war, he came to the United States where his war experience could not would not permit him to concentrate solely on his psychiatric practice, but compelled him to go beyond purely medical aspects of the social aspects of the problem. As more and more cases of thought control, brainwashing, and mental coercion were disclosed, Cardinal Mainzantini, Colonel Schwab, Robert Vo Voglar, and others, his interest grew. It was Dr. Merleau who coined the word menocide, the killing of the spirit, for this particular crime. His knowledge of these totalitarian procedures 
has been officially acknowledged. He served as an expert witness in the case of Colonel Schwab, the Marine Corps officer, who after months of subjugation to physical and mental torture following his capture in Korea, was made to confess to having taken part in germ warfare. And I want to remind you again that that is the rape of the mind, Joust A.M. Merlu, M.D. I have the PDF. If you contact me, I will send it to you. Okay, and on to Uncultured. This is by Daniela Metzianik Young. She escaped the Children of God cult, which is the same cult that like River and Joaquin Phoenix was in and Rose McGowan was in. I wanted to read you some clips from this book as well. Berg was the leader. I forgot his first name. Berg was his last name. Berg saw these young people as sheep in need of a shepherd and began to corral them into his flock. But the thing nobody ever tells you about the shepherd analogy is that the shepherds always eat their sheep in the end. Okay, herd mentality, hive mentality, and cult leaders. Okay, the way they control and manipulate. By the mid-70s, an estimated 30,000 people were on the active membership roles of the children of God from all over the U.S. and the group had spread to at least 15 countries. Cult, if you get into doing stuff, now this was a sex cult. This is what this was filled with pederasty. The prophet taught us that flesh and blood family was the least important connection to have. After all, we had the family all around us. To favor a biological family was selfish and went against God. They teach and preach isolation and to abandon your blood relatives and family members and relationship. This is very, very dangerous. This is a very dangerous situation. To be involved with, with cults and to be involved with people who have been trained by cults who are out to coerce. Okay, and this I just wanted to show you all. This was me, my life, before the online abuser. This is me and my daughter here, me and my husband here. I used to do art. This, this piece here was a piece that I had done not long before I had met my abuser, which I'll be introducing very soon. And then down here is the community that I had become a part of and was helping to grow and flourish until my abuser was able to make me feel as though I didn't need anybody but her. Hi everybody, this is Michelle Gibson, and I'm really pleased to introduce you to Buffy Breeden. Hi. And, hi Buffy. <laughs> and Buffy emailed me uh, a couple of months ago, and she spoke of her interest in whatever history has been hidden, but the umbrella part of her email to me was about how people who think differently, uh, who may be classified as neurodivergent by our establishment, are treated differently, treated poorly, and how that's affected Buffy's life as a different kind of thinker and processor out of the box and how that's affected other people in the same circumstances. And then as I got, have gotten to know Buffy, there's other things that she brings to the table in terms of her spiritual gifts, practices, and understandings. And so this is going to be the first interview of several. And Buffy lives in the Tennessee Valley. And she's going to be talking to us today about the Tennessee Valley information that she's found, field research that she's done, what our history tells us about the Tennessee Valley and the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is one of Franklin, Re uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal programs in the 30s. And um, we'll cover some of that ground because I think there's a lot more to that story than what we've been told. I'm going to go ahead and share the PowerPoint of the... First, I just wanna give you a look at how she changed my photos. Nothing I did was ever good enough, and I was not good enough. She was all the time 
expressing to me about how I must improve and be better, constantly working me to death. She totally changed how I looked in that photo. Dr. Michael, I did a video editing for her for him. Rachel, I will attach videos I did for her. Marianne, I still talk to to this day. Brian, I also still talk to to this day. Rambo, I've done many videos with Rambo. Terrell, I will be attaching videos that I did for him. And of course, here's a much, much older picture of Melanie. So these are just a few examples as to the type of leash and control that Melanie had on me. She was constantly sending me messages and emails, constantly in my business, constantly inviting me to people, uh, into groups of people that I didn't know, springing people on me, demanding me to drop everything I'm doing to, you know, do whatever she needed. So these are just a few apps. She had three different emails for me and she was on WhatsApp with me, regular text messaging, and at one point in Facebook as well. And these are just a few examples. you to dream chasers radio with me your host yaga diamond what's up people how you doing i am having such a wonderful time today i have a historian on someone who's gonna make me smarter i need it i need it and i'm telling you what you're you guys are just in for a treat so today i have a historian in, but she's not just any historian she's like she's got the true truth behind everything that she says i am so excited to have her i want to welcome her to the show man i'm telling you miss michelle gibson what's up girlfriend how you doing hi yaya and it's hey. really great to be here with you today oh, i'm really excited exciting. too thank you and I'm, I'm honored to be called a historian. Yes, um, I've been using the word historical detective um, because the history that I have to share with everybody isn't what you learn in school. Mm -hmm. And I've always had an inquiring mind. And I think I broke free of whatever programming I received growing up from the matrix many years ago. So I was open to receive new information. And when I did, it just came pouring in. Mm. Um, I'm not trained as, as a historian. And I tell people that I'm glad that I'm not because I probably would not have received the information that I did. Right. Um, gentleman that lost his son, America's most wanted. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name. The short guy. Right. And, and personally, I'm more afraid of a man or a woman in a suit than a kid or a person on a street in a hoodie and tennis shoes. Um, so they very much scared with their kids and stopped putting up these stupid competitive picket fences and looking for some government to save them. I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaga Diamond. What's up, people? We have a really interesting force fed uh, through compulsory education, which there's varying levels of the education. One that was set up for us, which I call, <clears throat> you know, the human farm animal train, and another for those that really run your communities and your world. So we were given all of these thought prisons, whether it's a, a religion or that a patriotism or uh, the leftism, when they're all the same ism. There's two kinds of people in this world. Hidden history, and what I believe was a relatively recent, deliberately caused worldwide liquefaction event. Well, on average, whether it's a plumber, yeah. whether it's a, a number of things, just charging people enormous amounts of money um, for any product, service, and good that, it, that isn't even vetted. Hey. I was well, but then how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I'm telling you. So tell us about yourself a little bit. Well, I'm a 33-year-old father. I just celebrated a birthday last Saturday on the 5th. 33-year-old um, father, a Morris American Mazda, um, entrepreneur, business coach, life coach. Um, it's pretty much it. A uh, real estate developer. And it's probably, it's pretty much it. It's pretty much just what I do is my niche. It's my niche. They awesome. Say. awesome. Awesome. So, oh my gosh. There's just...
everyone. I am here with City Gal Melanie, and she is going to be telling us why she started on GuruYourLife.com. Go ahead, Mel. Well, this is extremely premeditated. As most know, I grew up around crime syndicates, and I, I knew reality and had to just keep my mouth shut. By the time 2014 had rolled around, I had hatched a plan with several people to bring forth a private member association business club that services acute local needs of who to trust for everything and worldwide, and link this worldwide. We are pacifists, we are realists, and we are apolitical. There's no need to vote when we've always been free, but who do you trust? Knowing how bad these machines affect us, whether it's computers, smartphones, we have to move into the fourth industrial revolution with this technology completely automated. So while people are going crazy from the poisons in everybody's family, where do you learn to really rebuild your life in a world that is backed up by blackmail? And that is knowing who to trust on the other end of the keyboard and getting involved in your community. So this is why Unguru. Unguru is for those that are at peace, that don't need to blame, don't need to fight, don't need to vote for another, you know, golf master to save the day, that understand that this is a complete show and that we're all sick and poisoned. But how do we forgive? How do we move forward? And how do we stop what is happening without protesting, without warring? And by legally helping people unrig to know that they are their own person, that's when the people have power and they can stop all the poisons in their communities with simple legal processes. So we stop this peacefully and we know who to trust acutely local and worldwide. You wanted answers. You wanted some resolution. You wanted results. So you started on GuruYourLife.com and I think it's amazing. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for your time, Melanie. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Hello, everyone. I am here with City Gal Melanie, and she is going to be telling me what she is going to be offering on the unguruyourlife.com platform. Go ahead, Melanie. One of my definite goals is to bust down the feminist movement. And when I published City Gal Magazine, that's exactly what we did. We took a look at what relational aggression is amongst women. And I was heavily devoted to an organization known as the Ophelia Project, which we will be bringing into Unguru for young girls. It teaches young girls a hierarchy. It teaches how to know um, how to stand on your square as a woman's circle and how you benefit one another by creating a woman's pack not blaming a man or anybody else. So the Ophelia Project is something I'm going to be reigniting in Unguru. We are also going to be tackling race wars, black, white, yellow, red, uh, because we are all the same people. And we now know that crime syndicates have given us everything to fight about. They have given us experts to fight about when we can make our own decisions and it doesn't matter. Whatever happens behind a person's home within their family, that's how they said it. And it Again, because they are the human farm animals of the community crime syndicates. Where their managers are is in the Black Boulet and Masons that work with the Zionist Jews or other Zionist Christian organizations. It doesn't matter. They all work together to keep the brown skin people at the bottom. And another thing that we don't know about is our poor white South, uh, which has been equally destroyed because. These two races, if you want to call them races, are the keepers. They were the keepers from whatever happened here from the last time. So what does that mean by keepers? Mathematics, health, uh, things that really, really matter. Inner spiritualities, not outer spiritualities. Vibrational frequencies, all of those are carried in the brown skins and the white skins of the South. So we're going to bring that forth as well. Business and networking. Business and networking has uh, business and networking has to come to the forefront. What are the good organizations to network in? We have those uh, Toastmasters because it's apolitical. Any Lifetime Fitness is one of our partners, our corporate partners, and then we have co-working co-working warehouses that have you know bar a bar and restaurant within it where you can network acutely local to know who is who in your community. So those are the things that I will be bringing forth. If these things are not addressed, the future of our children, emotionally, the future of our children, if these things, these things are not addressed, the emotional state of our children is not going to get better, which brings me to the last thing I'm going to be addressing is that our children or our youth 30 and under have shell shock syndrome because of the behavior of the adults. And we are going to be bringing forth youth role models because there is no adult in media or arts to look up to. So we will be bringing those forth. So the youth 
understand that there is hope because what the adults have displayed for the youth is nothing but sheer terror um, in their own families, in their own homes, and it's to no fault of their own. But there are no adults for these, these youth to look up to. So that's why we are bringing back the role models for youth, youth role models, who are very down to the ground and understand what is happening through the poisons in the food and the air and the genetic modifications and our systems. And we're going to be elevating these youth to give youth hope as serial entrepreneurs and what they can do in their families and communities and for their bodies and their souls and their minds to become their own serial entrepreneurs. So those are my areas of expertise. Wow, well, those are very, very important topics that you're bringing to the forefront. And I know that everyone will greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much, Melanie. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Buffy. All right, well, thanks uh, for uh, stopping by to watch our video. This is Scott with Buffy and we're going to show you how to get to LearnDash and we're gonna to try to put up a very simple course so that you can see how the process works so that you can put up your own. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the uh, Unguru platform. Okay, so we are in maintenance mode. So if you go up here mm -hmm. and you go forward slash, after that, wp-admin. And we should be able to get in. Okay, so as many of you already know, it just redirected you to ungrewyourlife.com. So I'll go ahead and click on there and let's see what happens. Okay. So we're on, there, there's the three websites, the three different addresses that make up the Unguru platform. So the main one, which is where we are at right now, is unguru.com. The Learn Dash uh, plugin is actually on the community site. So Buffy's going to navigate us over to the community site. And for those of you who are not as familiar with WordPress and how it works, uh, with your privileges that we set you up with, you will be able to see the top line, the toolbar. Um, people who, you know, normal members won't be able to see that line up there. So if we go all the way to the far left hand corner where it says Unguru, and we click the dashboard, that's actually taking us onto the back side of the website. So go ahead and click there. Okay, so don't let this be confusing. Don't let this seem overwhelming to you. On that left hand side, just a couple entries down, you will see where it says Learn Dash LMS, and that is what we're looking for. So Buffy's highlighted that, and you see the sub menu come up. Now I'm gonna stop right here because one of the things that was a little confusing to me when I was starting with Learn Dash is the structure of a class or a course. So in LearnDash, we have courses and courses are made up, the subcategory of courses are lessons and subcategories of lessons are topics, okay? So if you click on courses for a second, Buffy, right there. Okay, and you scroll down. And for those of you who are familiar with WordPress, you will see this as the same kind of thing you see when you look for pages or posts. Um, what I found confusing was, is that the courses are listed here, but the lessons for each course, if we actually go back up to on the left-hand side, if we go back to Learn Dash, and we go to Lessons. Hi, my name is Rachel, and welcome to the Propagation of Creation. My name is City Gal Melanie, and I am here with our ensemble member, Terrell Johnson, and we are going to go through various things that will help set you up for generational wealth. How do you start if you're underneath you know, a rock or not in front of the eight ball yet? And I am here also with Lisa, who will remain anonymous through this, but we are going to be explaining where to start. Lisa is a 45-year-old female. She owns her own home. 
She works at Target as a manager and makes $45,000 a year. And she also uh, has a side business that she makes $20,000 a year at. She has $150,000 in medical debt. And she also has $15,000 in credit card debt. So add that to the living expenses. And we are going to get from Terrell how to start and how long it's going to take from beginning to end to get that business credit, learn financial literacy, and understand um, legal legally how to basically be in the private, but also, um, as Terrell says, um, what do you say, Terrell? You say, I own that control, own that control of everything. That's right. Hi, guys. So I'm going to show you how to get to the, there's the Unguru MP4. We're going to upload it. I wanted to say something about Patrick Marino because he is the reason I ended up staying with Melanie for the whole month of July in 2022. He also promised to help me do a lot of things after I worked 60 hours for him. So he owes me for 60 hours worth of labor and customer service that I never received payment for. This is the other group that splintered off the Lone Wolf Pack, which splintered off the W4 PMA group. Buffy Leanne is allegedly the wine producer, and I guess uh, Melanie Bennis is the producer. All right, so this is the notification that I sent her on July 19th, as I sent to everybody. Y'all can see it lists, uh, I'm inviting Buffy Leanne, Melanie, and Advents of Unguru, Patrick and Advents of Lone Wolf Pack. Philip, Sean, and admins of W4 PMA for a Zoom meeting on the Fierce Flood Show discuss peaceably and orderly the current issues being bandied about between parties. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. All you guys got these. So this morning, I sent her another one. I have not received any communications regarding this invitation for the Zoom meeting for you, Melanie, or your group representatives. The meeting will take place today at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with or without your participation. I do have RSVPs from both other groups and their representatives. Hope to see you there. And of course, as you guys may know, we do everything in threes, right? Here's the third notice. So I gave Buffy Leanne and Melanie, which I don't have her direct contact information, ample opportunity, plenty of notification to join in this meeting and represent themselves in their statements. So now we're going to look at and see who exactly who these people are. All right, this is Melanie Bears. We're going to look at all this stuff that she pontificates that she is. Advocate at the Institute for Responsible Technology, Tipping Point Network, member of the American News Women's Club, Chief, Chief Executive Officer and Founder at Unguru Your Life, worked at World Citizenship Council, owner and CEO at Glisten Executive Building Services, volunteer at Genocide Watch, works at Ophelia Project, project of the JFK Foundation, Dukatowski Trust, member of the International Association of Press Clubs, store manager, producer of Live Nation Concerts, credentialed combat investigative journalist, Former business think tank, Milwaukee Athletic Club, former member at Milwaukee Forum, former president of the Association for Women in Communications, former president at Business and Professional Women's Association, former founder, director, and CEO at City Gal Magazine, former founder, director, and CEO at Midwest Rock Opera Company, former volunteer at Green City Foundation, COA Youth and Family Centers. It's followed by 32 people. Now, well, what caught my attention is uh, 13 minutes after she made this post, up again. Pass it up. All right, this post right here from July 15th, 11.59 a.m. I got it about, I don't know, about 1.15. I mean, I'm sorry, 12.15 in the afternoon. <clears throat> Basically what this states is, uh, I apologized everywhere, paid back $250 to Lone Wolf Law Remedy, schmuck victims. And we have people coming on photos from the W4 group, that man Patrick Marino is skilled with full-blown corruption. Smoking baby in Hollywood have agreed to come on Sunday. Felicia Beverly has agreed also. We are done with law remedy schmuck. Um, as always, this will be moderated with great respect, calm, and as usual, professionally. The floor will be open for help. No more paying for anything ever again. We can all teach one another. 
And this is her second post. Last public meeting, Hollywood's testimony of Lone Wolf, alias Patrick Marino. This is not a wish hunt or defaming someone's character. This is about a man who is a predator managing to fool the W4 team, myself, and Buffy Breeden, an accredited line producer. All law remedy schmucks are finished on social media, and it is, and it is all credited to Joshua Gutierrez, who is fully tired of the greed and horse shit, and law maverick researcher, artist, mushroom aficionado, and ninja at all things metaphysical, who trusted and believed in me and my horse. I need a personal gain from anyone, and I am not in legal or financial trouble. I do not need fans or members for our PMA. We sure are not hurting. More on Sunday Zoom. Uh, Sunday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. I don't even know if this took place. It may have. At Corey Banks opening. I don't, you know, I don't know if any of these people actually were on it. April Scarlett, I do personally know. Spoken to her at length. She lives in uh, South Houston former realtor and uh, real estate broker. I won't get into the topic of our discussion when I did talk to her. So uh, I want you guys to know this is a very small community. A lot of people know each other. A lot of people have already had contact with each other. Most of us like myself who've been in this for well over a decade, we know who the players are. We know who the fakers are. Um, I've taken it upon myself to expose people who are frauds, who are con artists, trying to lead you astray or who unnecessarily disrupt the positive flow that we're all trying to have to get to whatever our goals look like, because my goals are not your goals. Your goals are not my goals. City Gal Melanie, Agent Smith here. See you leading people out of the matrix. Well, we will just see about that. Nonetheless, I will be watching you on Guru. <laughs> hey there, Captain's experiment your service. I hope you heard of me. So today, I'm here filming this video. Because I have a very important message for the last life skills team in this world. And I'm talking about Team Anguru. See? Melanie tells me that this is the place for all liars and pacifists. Whatever. That means these days we have so few adults. Adulting? Hmm? I think you are all onto something. Know better, do better, walk away. Anguru. Best life skills team. See? Captain Jack Sparrow. Goodbye. Hey, City Gal Melanie, Jerry Springer here. Uh, just want to say unguru and cheers to you, City Gal Melanie. Um, I know you're a person of good character, and the reason I can tell you that is I checked our records, and uh, yep, you have never been on my show. And that's a good sign. That's a sign of character, because you don't ever want to be on the show. That's like you. Anyway, I hope you have a great year, and uh, in the meantime, just take care of yourself and each other. It seems as though... Team Unguru has incarnated in this dimension to be the change. Very good. No space aliens are coming to save the day. We are the solutions. Well done, everyone. Well done. Hey, Melanie. Alice Cooper here. Everybody says that you are something. Well, welcome to your nightmare. Way to unguru. Make it count, city gal Melanie. My first girlfriend's name was Melanie, by the way. And there's a soft spot in my heart for Melanie. Or maybe that's my liver. That's somewhere in there. Hey there, team unguru. Um, this is a shout out for you from Melanie. I was wondering what to say to you. So um, Melanie says that it's about change and solutions and advice for Generation X. And my advice for Generation X is pick your battles. You can't fight them all. There's a great quote by Oscar Romero. It's, those who have a voice must speak for those who are voiceless. So go for it, Team Hungary. You're doing a great job. Stay the course. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Red Velvet. I was stirring it up. So City Gamaline tells me we are the solution. I think she's right. Let's listen to our hearts. And let's bring truth, health, and love back to our world. Congrats, Team Hungary. 
Annabeth Gish here. Unguru is the future. To be your own guru is the future. You know what they say, the truth is out there. Maybe the truth is inside you. Great job, Team Unguru. Amazing work, City Gal, Melanie. Bright future ahead for all of you. Hello, Team Unguru. This is Andrew Gray, actor, producer, and humanitarian. I hope you're all enjoying this beautiful day above ground. It's a gift after all. And way to go for restoring the truth, I guess, in journalism. Um, journalism is one of those things where it can be perceived many different ways. It can be to, tear a to tell a narrative. It can be to tell the truth. It can be used for lies. Whatever those things are, thank you so much for telling it the way that you know that is necessary. And it's very much appreciated. It's about time that we get some adults around the world. So thank you so much for the Gen X. You guys are always stepping up. You've been stepping up. You guys are a different breed. And I respect you. I honor that. And I thank you. So with all that being said, God is good. Enjoy your day. One love and God be praised to you. Thank you. Hey there, William Duvall here. And I just want to say congratulations. City Gal Melanie banging the unguru. Uh, I am very happy for the way you describe where you are in your journey right now. Uh, owning your situation, reclaiming your power, right on, right on. Uh, you have my very best wishes for continued success with that going forward. All right, peace. Hey, what's up? This message is for Unguru, the life skills team. You guys are coaching people to power, boundaries. Now listen. Melanie tells me that she found the dream team to help people be their own gurus. That's incredible. You go, Guru Cocos. Remain calm, unguru, and get the job done. Mwah. You can always sit with me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's me, Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister. Yeah, you know me. And Melanie has shared some knowledge with me, some insight, imparted some wisdom, and she is on the money. Because as aggressive and intense as I may be, I am very spiritual at heart, and that is the truth. And Melanie's telling me how Gen X needs future advice, needs future advice for this new normal. And that is for sure. It's not as bad as people think. Yes, that's spot on, Melanie. Peace is the way. Just turn off the wrong noise and turn on the right noise, like me, D. Snyder. Be the solutions. Be your own guru. Listen to what Melanie's saying because she is speaking righteously. Stay strong. Stay positive. Stay peaceful. Let your heart show. Congratulations, Melanie. I'm Sandy Truth, and I congratulate you for Unguru, which is intelligent, brave, captivating, interesting, and everything wonderful. And I'll be watching every day. Thank you.
it really is a business and they need to see it as such. So I really love this new direction. I can't thank Brian and Buffy enough and Chad. I'm really looking forward to working with you. What I was trying to say, and I don't know if it came through, is that, you know, I reached out to um, a lot of my performers and entertainers. Although they don't need the money, they're hanging on to upper middle class and middle class. I don't have to drag them, and I don't have to tell them reality about media. Um, and they do come, you know, quality, without dragging, without, you know, they're just, you know, again, we have... We have to see this as a business. So that's why we're not opening the community until February 1st. Scott and um, Brian are getting together. We're redoing an enterprise business plan, and we're also redoing the ensemble because we're going to have kind of like a TV guide. So, yeah, there's just, a, there's just minor changes, but they're really good changes. And this way, I don't have to constantly inform people of reality <laughs> because I don't, you know, at the end of the day, people need these life skills. At the end of the day, we're producing quality entertainment, and we have a lot of sponsors coming on. And it's not doom, doom and gloom because none of this has been hidden. So super excited, super excited about everything. And love you guys. Yes, it is amazing. And again, um, a lot of these people are laid off from tech. They're being laid off from, you know, film work and all of the stuff that they're doing in my academics. Um, you know, they want a home. They, they love this. So they are content creating. Um, we're doing various different game shows and so it's going to take us a few months to get all of that together. They see the value in this because it literally can be endless money for um, those people. And we are, you know, an ensemble. So we want all nation state people in the private. And another great aspect is that with our private broadcast network, nobody can coach it. It's unpoachable. Is broken, so people can't even face record, regardless of what devices they have. So we just we need to go in this direction. Um, I just can't drag anymore, and people have to see their own business as you know value, because that's just the way it's going to be. Regardless of whatever anybody does, the competition is going to get so thick in, in anything. And who wants to stay stuck working for the man? I'm just gonna say I totally get it. I totally get it. And I sent, I sent the message here, so um, we're not blowing Melanie up. We've both sort of been. Look here, I'm peeling from my iodine. We've both been like balls to the wall lately. It's been crazy. Anyway, hi, I'm Buffy. How you doing? Just wanted you to know that it it will not flow like a regular website she built it to be like myspace so there's not like a nice addictive flow and algorithm like there is all the other websites so it's meant to get you on there do what you want to do and just get off it's supposed to be like a rotary club where people have private member associations and everyone's been vetted and had background checks and it's all good source material, really. So if you know what a Rotary Club is, that's what it's like. The hive mind is the best kind. <laughs> Trying to hold it together.
she just needs to be up front about it. Well, we need to get on a Zoom. Well, that, that's not why I called the Tuesday at all. Okay, well, what is it? Well, we'll talk about it on Tuesday. But it doesn't have anything to do with, like... Well, no. No, when we call a meeting, it does have to go through me. So we're not going to talk about it on Tuesday. Huh? What's the meeting for? It's for some different stuff that I've been researching. Okay, well, what are you researching and what is the meeting for? Why does it have to go through you if we... Because this is on Guru and I'm about to shut this fucking down because I can't fucking handle the drama. I'm not starting any drama. And it's not about drama. It's about, no, we don't have secrets. When a Zoom is called with Unguru's Ensemble, I am the director. But, okay, because I, okay, because I thought last night you said for me to quit calling you the CEO. What oh, was it you CEO. said? Okay, okay. We have to bring in new media. We have uh -huh. to bring in a new way of having um, structures. But at the end of the day, there is a hierarchy. So I am an ensemble member to the public. Behind the scenes, I am the director. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So that's how we do, that's how we're going to do the pamphlet. Okay. So, so there has to be a hierarchy. So, if we're calling a meeting, I have to know what it's about. It's on my, it's just on my research. And it's like, I wanted to share, you know, my findings. Why? And I want to have a Zoom with you and Rachel because this is bullshit. Not on your end, on her end. And she needs to apologize. Because if you're calling and you're, you are trying to reach her,
Hello. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Um, yeah, it was pretty tense. There's about 47 of us here. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it, my condition and Killian's condition is rather life-threatening, so I guess I understand. Um, so yeah, lots, lots going on. You know, I could be dead tomorrow, and at the end of the day, um, wow just crazy what 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 else going on with you um complex ptsd and then uh my blood platelets are really low so there's just a bunch of tests that i need to go through came back um with my teeth and i think it's just really unresolved from the two tours of combat journalism and dealing with really fucked up people that have no clue um, about business. There's something to be said for, you know, corporate monkeys. They don't destroy each other's relationships. They don't um, take texts and, and, you know, send them off. And, you, you know, they just, it's just the most bizarre shit. There's no drama. You go in, you're professional, you do your shit, and if there's conflict, it's handled fairly. There is great gratitude um, for everybody involved, and this has just uh, been insane. <laughs> mm. You know, like, for instance, sweat equity, that's, that's you. That's not me. It's the price that people pay for getting a, a foot in the door. So well, I'm sure you're unaware of that. No, I figured it was like a kind of like an internship, learning how to do things, mm -hmm. uh, proven, proven myself as not being someone who just wants something for nothing, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's basically. That's the whole, the whole thing of it. So we sat down and um, I had a meeting with my family and the board and just how much money has leaked out of my funds and the gift. And it really comes down to Michelle, which is such a bummer. <laughs> Um, so it's just compounded by the health crisis, which everybody is going through. And it doesn't ma it's not like, it's not, uh, one better than the other, you know, everybody's fucked up right now in some way, shape or form. <laughs> How can you not be? Uh, you can't, you know? So I just happen to be lucky in the fact that I have a really good friends and family, which were established when I was, you know, young. Mm. So I need to take a break and Unguru is going to be completely rebranded. I am being pulled out of the executive position, executive director position, um, because of this complex PTSD with the combat tour um, I feel like I, I need to save everybody and owe everybody and I don't. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're going to rebrand it. They're going to redo it. And you will be get, you will be gotten a hold of, um, at some point. So we're looking, they're looking at March, but for now. Uh, Sylvia's back. Um, I have, Killian has surgery at one o'clock and my family has to come first. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that makes complete sense. 
So we will probably look. We'll probably be going to uh, Georgia while my house is renovated because, you know, again, I had this. I had this, and I couldn't see it until I got off the computer. I had this, like, oh my god, I need to save everybody, but everybody was calling for four years, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, just burning in fire. So, if you don't have to contact anybody, and I would preferably prefer that you don't, um, I will make sure to contact Christopher because we don't know how, they don't know how they're going to shape this. And I'm not going to die over it. Right, Um, right. You know, but you're not out or anything else like that, just so you know. Okay. Um, You know, they're... They know how I feel about you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And how I wanted to give you a step up. And, uh, you know, we both have a lot of work to do on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And I want to see all of that happen. You know what I mean? Right. I do. Because I believe in you. I believe that you have complex PTSD just as bad as I do. And it does put us in like a delusional realm. It really does. Well, I I hope that I can figure out exactly what's wrong with me with a therapist and I'm looking at ketamine just doing it at home because if I go oh, to yes, if I do it in Nashville, it's probably going to cost more than if I just do Mind Bloom at home. They have Mind Bloom. Mm-hmm. And they also, Mind Bloom is great, but I would really suggest Intervenus. And there's a bunch of them around you. And the great thing um, is Lucas loves you. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's just even one person. You know? Mm -hmm. I love you you know but ketamine I think the intravenous kind you know but you can you can do what you want you know yeah yeah but they do have the ketamine clinics around you and because you are in disability with pain um you know that's going to be covered by insurance yeah well they do yeah they do they'll pay back they'll do like they'll they'll do a it's like a chargeback a reimbursement is what i meant a reimbursement of uh a lot of insurances will reimburse if you pay out of pocket for it. So we're still, I mean, with the holidays, it slowed everything down, but we're still researching everything yeah, about it. Yeah. You know, ketamine saved my life, but then getting re injured by the teeth, I went right back to the uh, guilt and shame of the two tours of combat journalism. Um, Killian is filling out, she'll be filling out in the next month her um, affidavit of truth, and she will send you what you need to do. And we will pursue from there. So I'm not, I'm not letting you go, okay? Mm hmm. Um, so okay. you can get that lawsuit underway. Yeah, because it's really fucking important. I mean, that will give you the leverage. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll move you over that mountain. We'll get you um, the steps for. You, you should have it, but I, I don't know what they've done. They've taken control of everything and they're putting everything on maintenance, the engineers. So I will get you those steps for the credit. They're real easy to follow. I will, and if you have any trouble, Scott said, shit, if she has any trouble, we'll zoom. We'll get this shit done. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I did with my resumes is I just put that I was a research volunteer for the website. And I listed all the things that I had done. 
and if they want to dig further they may email the website send, send me your resume and I will doctor it okay so you have at least five years of experience with me you know what I mean well I put that I was uh, a volunteer from March until December because yeah. that at least I know I've done you know yeah again you can <clears throat> business spend they're not gonna you know if you want to get an online um, interim job you'll step right into management mm -hmm. so also uh, both Scott and I will be giving letters of reference okay you know what I mean okay so um, yeah because they're because again it the, the circles are shut mm -hmm. you're over 35 they won't even fucking look at you unless you have a track record right so and i understand why because people do this kind of crazy shit they try to you know fuck each other over it's fucker fucker be over i mean that's why michelle was such a, a mind blower i mean the ladies in the army she was high level kiwanis you know, it was such, uh, and we'll get down to getting an affidavit for that too, because that fucked us up. Because it would have been fine, fine. Mm hmm. Right. It would have been. So, all of these uh, actions and reactions, you know? Um, yeah, it just sucks. And when you have complex PTSD, you can't see yourself. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see myself. You can you can see other people. I mean, having applied psychology really does help. Um, getting off that computer is like the sludge, like snaps back. <laughs> right. It was. It was so weird. Mm -hmm. It was so weird. Um. So, yeah, I mean, you don't need much, Buffy. You're one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. You don't you need to believe in yourself. I'm starting to. I'm you starting need to. to. You need to be careful on tit for cat shit. Um, I don't really do tit for cat shit. <laughs> no. Well, you did with you had with me a few times, and that's okay. That's residual. Um, don't send texts to people. Don't, you know, just always keep it to yourself. So, okay. <clears throat> gotta be able to take constructive criticism. Right. Right. You know, so that's, you know, that's why people are, are afraid of you. It's because you will lash, you will lash out. If you feel you've been wronged, you will you will lash out. Yeah, I I haven't lashed out in a long time, so mm -hmm. it's been a good long time. Yeah, and that's you know again, those are pains and wounds that are very real, and that does go into PTSD. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you were bullied and traumatized you know, and told what to do and all of those kinds of things. And that doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Constructive criticism is then it's then even hard to take. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because it's an imbalance in you've always been stuck and stamped. And every time you get, you seem to try to get ahead, somebody crushes you again you know what I mean mm -hmm. whether it's mm -hmm. your sister who fucked up your house you know what I mean right and then going on disability or the judgment fucking people and just it's been awful for you it's been awful for everybody um I just happened to come with a fucking army and <laughs> I thought I was strong enough to handle it on my own. And I certainly wasn't. 
and I didn't take anybody's feelings in my own family into account. Oh, well, yeah. When you said there was 40-something people, I was like... Were they, everybody just dropped everything and, and ran or something? That's like, wow. Yeah, that's well. That's having a family, which I'm very blessed for. And then you have a circle of friends that are very powerful. You know, and I was able to accomplish that at a very young age. It's not that I... Uh, had any doors open to me because that's not how my family operates you know you have to make those doors you don't just to get to walk in mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um, and that makes for really good people but sometimes you know I think given my childhood there's a lot there too that I haven't really addressed so I've got to, a lot to address <laughs> yeah. because yeah I just do and I just want to make sure you know that I keep my promises okay. you know I want to see you sober I don't say things to people I don't mean Well, all we can do is, you know, do better every day. Well, yeah. This is the health crisis. Um, being this far ahead of the game, you can avoid it. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are going to be losing their blooming fucking minds. And they already are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they don't have anybody. And again, if you're over 35... And, and you've been stumbling along in life. Nobody's going to deal with that without, in, you know, impeccable recommendations. Um, that we know for sure, because you get the Michelles of the world. Uh -huh. They're going to want to know what you volunteer for. They're going to want your financials open because financial literacy does really tell it tells a lot about the person you know um and that may hurt and it, it's not a put down okay it's not but <clears throat> again it's no different than being a greedy fuck wealthy motherfucker that doesn't do anything they've got you know issues like I've got issues <laughs> it's just scary issues because they blame and they, they you know they think it's everybody else's fault and if I would have just you know and it's always somebody else's fault and that gets scary you know because there's all kind of twisted shit that can happen on that end with the greedy fox with the you know like super uber wealthy creepers They'll get you into a blackmail situation. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. It's completely different. But it's almost the same. You know? It's just, it's so fucking weird. Um, yeah, it's just so weird. So, yeah, don't worry about Christopher. Because this is between you and I. I don't want him to know. And I do want him to continue on the law. I think we're going to go more life skills routes than uh, anything. Okay. You know? Okay. I mean, you've got a ton of life skill things. Uh, comedy. Yeah. Um, th those fucking what the fucks are going to be the bomb. Yeah. Yeah, they're funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get off here. I've got to go use the bathroom. I've been holding it for a minute. <sighs> okay. I'll talk to so you soon. 
Are we good? Oh, uh, yeah. Love you. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Up until 2019, sent me a video of a recording of a court hearing between her and her children. This was the last text message I had received from Melanie and she sent it in the group with myself, my husband, and my child who was a minor at the time. And I'm going to read it. Oh, and I did have to connect with the five people, such as Rachel especially. I owed her an apology. Now that I did not disperse your name, know that I did not disperse your name, I did say Buffy went home to attend to her health and family. You do lie and manipulate all the time to everyone when it suits your needs, Buffy. No one there wants any trouble from you or contact either. They don't want to be near you. I made a terrible mistake and didn't see who you really are until you lived here and nothing added up. No gratitude, nothing. I couldn't figure out how so many people really despise you other than you called out their scams. I no longer believe this. Again, professionals don't have time to gossip, but when I make a mistake, I do make it right. It's unfortunate how bizarre people have become. I have had such a blind spot. I should have guessed when you snap texts from of drama with others and send them to me. Rachel is not a trafficker. Zionists are in everything, and you be bald face lied to me about your dealings with her. The slightest words can damage people, especially when you have their trust. This has been your mode of operation learned in childhood. We all feel sorry for you, really. I hope you get the help you need for Lucas and your daughter. I do believe you topped Michelle. Please bear with me, everyone, as this is very hard still for me to read this here a year and eight months later. Um, Good-hearted people like me who have earned everything they have do not behave this way at your age. This middle school bullying, which is to have everyone in a corner and then make them all hate one another whenever it suits your agendas. This is her. This is her projecting onto me what she does. And this is exactly uh, the type of bullying that I endured from her for over a year. And all I did was ask about my medical records, as you see. Did I leave my medical records at your house? And then she laughs again. Now keep in mind, this was also sent to my daughter, my underage daughter, and my husband as well. I was really trying to not feed into her insanity. So she responds, oh my God, you are the biggest narcissist I have ever met. I hope Lucas wakes up and no. I said, no, my medical records are not at your house, question mark. And she responds, me, me, me at 47 euro at 47 years old, no credentials, one horrific reputation and God help you. No, they're not here, as I would never purposely harm you or anyone. Retaliation is not in my circles, darling. Big-time lawyers are, and reputations that cannot be touched carry on. Blocking now and sending out one last email 
to everyone about rebranding and that you are taking your leave to focus on yourself. Okay, I responded, okay, so you can stop with the abusive text, please, and leave me alone. This would be abusive. Maladaptive liar who married an innocent child. The above is not abusive. It is abusive, I said, and it is harassment. For the second time, please stop texting me and my family. And then she sends me a picture of... I don't know what it is. It looked like maybe some very expensive cat litter from what I could tell in the picture. And she goes on to try to accuse me of poisoning her and her family. And I will go ahead and tell you that I never harmed anyone. Then she says, our housekeeper found this after we received our surveillance tapes. It's being sent out for testing. We may or may not press charges due to the level of mental illness you carry, Buffy. If this is poison, you will be put behind bars. We have you on camera as our entire home and house but for bathrooms and guest rooms have surveillance cameras in our lighting and on the outer part of our property. Everyone is blocking your number now. Goodbye, Melanie. You stole my car in the middle of the night also. Expect the police, lady, and your entire town knows your home and literally wants nothing to do with you. I will be releasing the footage to our entire community. Okay, nothing ever come of this because she had no footage. She had no proof. That was not poison. There was no videotapes. If there was videotapes, she would have sent videotapes. She was trying to scare me into not saying anything and it worked. It did. It worked. It kept me in a mental prison until I found out she went to jail. It was not until then that I felt some form of release that I didn't even know I needed. How am I supposed to introduce you now? Do you want to be like... City gal Melanie, no. Because when... The thing of it is, is we can never fucking have this again. And this is what I'm going to be talking about. We can never have... I mean, when you're working on, like, what we're... This is your shit. Okay. You know what I mean? So I'm just city gal Melanie. Okay. Um, I just know how you want me to introduce you. I think the video highlighted a lot of the abuse and trauma that you endured over the years that we were involved with her. At first, we were blinded by all of the love bombing. There was so much of that going on around her. We were trying to start a small branch brewery when we first met her. She was all about it, saying that it would do really well in the area that she lived. When we finally got down there and she got to try it, she really, really enjoyed it to the point where she drank almost all the bottles that we had brought with us and she told us that it would sell for $10 a bottle easily. At that point, we felt like she was spitting in our face. The amount of work and research that went into the recipes and the methods that we used, it was just very nauseating, but we brushed it off and didn't pay it any mind. That's when the gaslighting started. That's when 
The law Zoom meeting started that could last up to 12 or more hours. The first time we visited, it was so amazing to be able to spend two weeks at the beach. I mean, who wouldn't be thrilled at that? But we came to learn it wasn't just us taking a vacation. We were essentially the uh, staff of the house. We cooked and we cleaned. No one really helped us except for uh, doing occasionally. When it was time for us to start packing up, she had convinced us that it was a good idea for me to go back home while Buffy and R stayed for another month. That's when the abuse really kicked into high gear for her and R Buffy had no one to protect her from all the abuse after I had left. The second time that we stayed there, it was so much worse to the point that she basically told Buffy that she wanted her as her maid. When Buffy had told me that, I had just got off work and I left the following morning to go down and pick her up. That was a 900 mile trip. To this day, we are still affected by all the events and the abuse that took place. Hopefully now that she's in jail, the healing can start. Yeah, I'm gonna send that in. I cannot believe that my husband, he had help in doing this because I don't know if it was our clients or if it was the people that I threw out of on Guru because I've never been against the government. And then whatever happened, do you, do you know anything about her third daughter? Or is, is that, is the oldest one, from what I can... From what I can tell, the oldest one come back now that Melanie's in jail. Oh, jeez. And Melanie, Melanie told me that she was an, uh, a, like a high-priced prostitute and, and convinced me to um, like reach out to her. So, okay, you said Melanie talking about Sylvia? Sylvia, yes. Nobody said that she had run away and become a high-priced prostitute or something like that, and um, wanted me to reach out to her because she wouldn't talk to Melanie and had me text her and call her, but of course she never responded because she probably too, you know, knows she wanted to say. I'm surprised she came back for a mother. Jesus. You know, the only person that I ever know that actually stole from me was Melanie, even though she kept telling other people was stealing from me. So I never saw anything directly. I mean, there was some weirdness, that's for sure. I mean, the repeating being, um, always in the past, always in the future, not in the present, but I never saw anything directly stealing from me. So I didn't know that she was stealing from me. Um, but I did know that she had been stealing from me. Yeah, I know that she had been stealing from me. Yeah, I know that she had been stealing from me. Yeah, I know that she had been stealing from me. Yeah, I know that she had been stealing from me. Yeah, I know that she had um, but when, so like when I was getting more involved in the meetings, to run the meetings, and then she's, you know, finally called me about the matrix or whatever, you know, that was weird. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was to, because I'm, because something I'm good at is organizing meetings and things like that, so. No, I was the one who was involved with MK, and there, there's a lot of, I wish that I could explain properly, but I mean, my interactions with her were very bizarre for the most part. Like the, the, the best conversation I ever had with her was the last one we had. And um, I was talking to her about my settlement and just a lot of things going on. And there's, sorry I'm doing it like this, but I can't type right now. The, um, crap, I forgot what I was gonna say, forgive me. Hi, my name is Bethany. I am Buffy's sister. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to add some insight on who my sister has been, who she became, and who she is now. Um, my sister, for as long as I can remember, has always had a zest for life. She has always done her best to help others to educate herself, to take care of herself and her daughter. Um, she has always been cheerful and so enlightening to others. She has just always been this big, beautiful light um, as soon as she walks into a room. Um, now, that was previous to her going to Florida. Um, Upon her going to Florida, I was upset because she was moving so far away and my niece was going with her. Um, 
So I did ask her not to go. Um, but she really believed in Melanie and the goals that Melanie was trying to achieve. So I had to support her. Um, while she was there, she became increasingly paranoid and wary of her surroundings and those that she was living with. Um, she worked extremely hard for no pay. Um, she was definitely not who my sister had always been. And it was heartbreaking. So once she decided to make the break and move back home, I was very relieved. Um, I was very welcoming. Um, I wanted this more than anything. Having her down there, I felt lost. Um, I didn't know if she was okay. I don't feel like I could talk to her as much as I normally would have. Um, so when she did come back home, I was very grateful. Now, when she did return back home, she was not herself. She was broken and scared and her body was broken down from where she had worked. My sister is just not physically able to do that due to disability. Um, so seeing her in the state that she was in when she returned, mentally, emotionally, physically, was very hard to see. And I am just so grateful that she broke out of that. She got away from Melanie altogether. Um, and to this day this very day she is still trying to heal from it um i want to be as supportive as i can that is why i am sending this so that she can add it to her documentary for other people who have family members in situations like this to always try to be supportive of them to love them no matter what um and try to just be cognizant of what they're going through and just see the warning signs. Um, so I do hope this helps others. I'm always available for any questions. I'm ready to talk about this. Um, thank you. I wanted to say something about Patrick Marino because he is the reason I ended up staying with Melanie for the whole month of July in 2022. He also promised to help me do a lot of things after I work 60 hours for him so he owes me for 60 hours worth of labor and customer service that I never received payment for in times of great reveal what will your choice be will it be the light wolf or the dark wolf or maybe it will be the lone wolf in a wolf pack lone lone wolf, wolf pack consulting Haitian vetiver. That's where the plant was that they. Nope. She doesn't like it. Name is Clara. I'm about to play my chickens. I'm a honky, rapid chicken lover. Now watch.
ready, it's, it's precise, you know? You gotta get it, and you gotta get it right. I'm trying to get them tuned proper, so you just have to wait till the next time. Ricky, Ricky, walk. Yeah.